Good morning, good afternoon, and a good evening. We are live from Portland, Oregon. Welcome to Portland State University, and thank you very much for participating in our second webinar of this year, 2021. My name is Yoko Honda, and I'm an International Student Life Advisor and also a coordinator for International Student Orientation at PSU. We are very excited to meet you and welcome you in September as you start your first term at PSU. Today, we are going to discuss housing and student life at PSU. And today's webinar is recorded and will be shared with you after the presentation so that you have all the information available to you um, today and later on. We will have about 10 minutes toward the end of the session to address your questions. Um, so please ask questions by typing them into the chat box um, so that everybody can see your questions. And you can do so throughout the webinar. Please do not use the raise hand function. Um, just use the chat function, uh, which allow all participants to, to see the questions that are being asked. Um, and it, which is really helpful for everybody. Um, so please use that function to ask us any questions that you have. I will moderate the questions you type and we'll answer them live after the presentation. So during the Q&A session time. If there are highly personalized questions um, regarding, you know, specifically to your question or your case, uh, we will we might ask you to follow up with our office or housing office uh, for that. And in our webinar today, we will go over introduction of presenters, homestays, on campus housing off-campus housing, contracts and leases, how to live happily with roommates, other important information, PSU student life, and Q&A toward the end. Today, we are joined by three expert panelists who will be giving you important information that will help you prepare for fall term. I would like to ask my colleague to introduce themselves and starting with Alyssa. Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa Koida and I am a program coordinator for the Office of International Student and Scholar Services. Um, I help Yoko with orientation as well as the mentor program, um, as well as uh, helping students who have come on government scholarships. So uh, most likely in the fall when you arrive, you'll see me at the front desk um, if you have any questions. Um, or over email. So I'm looking forward to me meeting everyone soon. And I'll pass it over to Diane. Hi everyone, my name is Diane Arce. I work in the Housing and Residence Life Office as the Housing Operations Coordinator. So I support the front desk. I can answer any basic questions you have about contracts, billing, general student housing information. Um, happy to have you all here today and then I'll pass it on to Grace. Hello everyone, my name is Grace and I use she, her pronoun and I'm one of the mentor leader in the uh, in in the ISMP, and I'm also a graduate student in applied physics. And nice to meet you today. And I hand it back to Yoko. Thank you, everybody. Now that we, uh, we've introduced you to our team, we would like to get a sense of who is in the audience today. I'll be sending you a couple of quick poll questions to answer. So we'll just take a minute to get those responses. So let me share the first sets of questions. All right, so we are asking four questions. What is your academic level? Let us know. Are you a graduate student, postback student, undergraduate students? What, uh, which type of visa will you have? F1, J1, or if you have any other immigration visa status, um, or if you're a US citizen, and do you already have a visa to enter the United States? Um, and where are you right now? Just let us know where you are connecting to our webinar from. And then we'll wait maybe 20 more seconds or so, so that everybody has chance to answer this question. And we'll definitely share the results that 
you all know who's in the audience. Five more seconds. Okay, so I will share the results. So it seems like a majority of you are graduate students, either master's or doctoral students, and five of you are undergraduate students, maybe pursuing bachelor's degree or um, short-term exchange students. And yes, majority of you, 23 um, students are on F1 visa or will be on an F1 visa. And six of you are um, going to be a J1 students. And great that majority of you already have a visa. Um, I know that it's taken a little while um, to get your visa approved. So hopefully that will um, happen very soon so that you can um, get here on time. And Oh, great. So majority of you are still in your home country, which makes sense. Um, and then one student is in a different city in the United States. Great. Awesome. So I'll move into the next question, specifically about housing. We would like to know what your housing situation is going to be like in fall term. Okay, just let us know if this is your first time living in the United States or you've lived here before, you know, with either your family members before. And what will your housing situation is like in a fall term? Do you already have a on-campus housing set up, apartment, or will live in a house, or you will live with your relatives who are in the United States or in Portland? And if you live on campus, we'll live on campus. Did you already request an early move in so that you can move in early? And what will you arrive, when will you arrive in the United States? Just let us know the timeline so that we know when we are expecting you to be here in Portland. So we'll wait maybe like a 20 more seconds or so for everybody to be able to answer these questions. All right, so I'm going to end the poll now and share results. Great. So majority of you, this is uh, your very first time living in the United States. It's an exciting, um, definitely exciting, um, but might be a little bit anxious, but it's OK. We'll make sure that you will have a great time here in Portland. And it seems like, um, yeah, seven of you um, will live on campus and majority of you will live in an apartment or house. And one of you will live with your relative. And it seems like a five of you, um, well, out of seven, um, already request an early move in and two has, have not yet. And oh, one of you are already here. Great. Welcome to Portland and PSU. And um, so it's, it's uh, three of you will be, live, uh, will be arriving soon. And 15 of you will be arriving at the, the beginning of September. 11 of you will be um, moving in over here um, in mid to end of September. Great. Thank you very much for um, answering those questions. All right. So we are moving into the presentation piece. Um, so Alyssa will share information about homestays. Great, thanks, Yoko. Um, so I know that it seems like a lot of people are interested in um, having an apartment off campus. Um, I'm, uh, and I just wanted to say, um, a homestay 
can be a great way to connect to Portland and the local culture as well as people. Um, because you can live with a local family, learn more about US culture, um, and practice English with native speakers. Um, and all homesteads usually include a private room, access to a study area, high speed internet, meals, um, and public transportation. So it is similar to what you would get in an apartment, um, just adding that extra level of living and seeing what it's like um, in a normal everyday family setting. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, what are the benefits, what is it like to live in a homestay, so understanding the local culture. Uh, American culture is extremely diverse. Um, Experiencing firsthand what it's like to live with a family in Portland is <clears throat> a much different experience mm -hmm. from living on your own or learning about it through books, TV, and or movies and how it's portrayed that way. And so you can get the opportunity to discover daily customs and rituals in a typical home as well as find out how local families celebrate holidays, um, enjoy free time, how and what they eat, how they interact with each other and their, their way of living. Um, being able to practice and learn everyday English. So living with a host family will definitely improve your language skills. Um, if you're staying in a home, you will learn words and phrases that are useful in everyday um, situations such as the dinner table, um, talking about your day, understanding basic conversation topics, and it's a great way to practice and learn English with people you see every day. And of course, um, build a community and connection. So one of the most lasting benefits you may get from staying with a host family is the connection and lasting bond you make uh, by spending a lot more um, a lot of time with your hosts, you will find out how they live and what their interests are far more easily than you could do in most circumstances. Um, most hosts will be available to help when you have questions about American life or culture, English grammar, or feeling homesick and usually will include you in family celebrations and activities and hopefully you will become a part of their family and might become lifelong friends. Uh, when I was studying abroad in Japan, I did a, a homestay and I kind of everything I talked about happened. Um, we, we still talk to this day. She is an amazing woman and I had a great time. And so um, a homestay could be a great option for you if that is something that sounds um, appealing. And the process to apply for a homestay, um, it's important to choose an organization that's right for you. Um, most commonly, homestays are a one-term commitment or longer, uh, but can be month to month, depending on the organization you sign up with. And there is one current local provider, homestay provider in the area, <clears throat> which I'll talk about more in a minute. And um, as a reminder, if you are, if you end up deciding that a homestay is for you, it's better if you sign up as soon as possible because it does take out time for you to fill out the application and then for the organization to uh, find a family that uh, fits your needs and making sure it's a good match. And so I do recommend uh, filling out the application at least four weeks in advance to give, give that time to properly match you. Um, for availability, uh, like I said, apply early and be detailed in your application. Um, and for example, in your application, what I mean by being as detailed 
as possible, just making sure it's clear, like if you prefer a lot of quiet time or if you come from a place where it's like a lot of talking, a lot of family members, like loud and energetic, um, or if you do or don't like pets and what you do in your free time, just so that the provider knows kind of exactly <clears throat> what kind of environment to place you in because we wouldn't they wouldn't want to place you um, in an environment that ended up being uncomfortable for you so um, that's what I mean by um, being as detailed in your application as possible so the um, the homestay organization in Portland um, currently is called uh, FOCUS. They um, are a faith-based coalition of Portland community members that have been working closely with our international office for many, many years. Um, they help with homestays, but they also help with airport pickups, English conversation classes, um, tax help, and activities for international students at PSU. Um, and so if you are interested in a homestay, the um, web link is right there on the screen. And then if you end up um, needing that, you could always contact me or your international student mentor will have this information as well that they can provide to you. Um, and lastly, important things to know. Um, Keep in mind that homestays can be very different from what you expect. The U.S. is a super diverse place and each individual family will have their own unique take on American culture and their way of living. And so hosts can range from like single parents to older adults to family with, families with young or older children. So it's really important to be flexible, to have an open mind, uh, willing to try new things and contribute as a family member. And Yoko, if you wanna go to the next page. Thank you, Alyssa. Now Diane will be giving you information about on-campus housing. So what is it like to live on campus? Kind of like what Alyssa said, it's probably not what you see on TV or in movies. I grew up in America and the way that college residence halls are portrayed, it was not anything like what I experienced when I lived on campus at my undergrad university. Um, so here at Portland State, all student levels can live with us of all ages. We have our freshmen who live together. I know a lot of you are graduate students, and usually the concern we hear from graduate students is that they don't want to live with the freshmen, so you don't have to worry about that. We have freshman floors, and so they live all together, and then graduate students can live in any of our eight residence halls. Um, just so you all know, our freshmen primarily live in Ondine, Broadway, and Stephen Epler, but then we have graduate students who live all over. Our best housing option for graduate students might be our one bedroom. It comes furnished and it can be in either double or single occupancy. So single meaning that you live by yourself, double meaning that you have a roommate, but also living on campus, you have a variety of units to choose from. Portland State is in an urban environment, so that's something to keep in mind when choosing to live on campus. Some of the benefits of living on campus is that you get to live with other students. We do our best to create an environment that's best for studying. So we do have quiet hours that are in place, um, normally from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m., and then those quiet hours increase during study week right before finals and then as well as during finals week. We have courtesy hours 24 seven. We have staff members who are on campus and they can help you with any lockouts. They can help you connect to resources that are at PSU 
probably help you with homesickness or if you're having roommate conflicts, they're there and they're well equipped to help you um, acclimate to residence life at PSU. Uh, there is a convenience factor living on campus, right? Everything is right at your fingertips. F walking from one side of campus is probably just a 10 minute walk and from the residence halls to any of the classes is probably five to 10 minutes at most, I would say. You're also close to everything that's located downtown. So not just classes, but also shopping, lots of restaurants, food options. We have our waterfront, which is really awesome. Each spring, the cherry blossoms come out. And so that's really cool to get to kind of the main part of downtown Portland. It's probably just a 15 minute walk or there's lots of public transportation options. You can ride the streetcar, which is free. There's bus and max trains, which makes it really easy to get around. I myself haven't had a car since I've lived in Portland. I just use transit and it's been really easy for me. Along with convenience factor, if you ever need to do study groups or work on group projects, it's nice when you live on campus and you can just meet with other students seamlessly. Another thing about living on campus is cost. Our rates stay competitive, so we do our best to be at market, uh, at market rates or under. All utilities and internet are included in our rates, and we bill to your student account, which makes payment really easy. So you'll just pay it just like you pay tuition. You can pay in full at the start of each term, or you can enroll in the payment plan to pay monthly. You can also choose to have a meal plan. So meal plan is required for our freshmen, but everyone else, it's optional. So that's another convenience factor. I myself kind of miss having the ability to have someone else cook for me and do my dishes. I kind of miss that living in the residence halls. So for anyone who's considering living on campus, we do have our housing contract online. You'll just fill it out. You'll log in with your student account information. We're still accepting contracts. We'll continue to accept those through week four of fall term. The contract is for the full academic year. Uh, we do allow move-ins during winter term and spring term if that's something you're thinking about. Right now, most of our availability is in our double furnished options. So meaning that you would have a roommate and we would do the roommate matching for you. So no worries there. We have an early move in request process that is due by August 27th. So it looks like the few of you who are living on campus, five of you have filled it out. There's two more who haven't yet. If you do want to be considered for early move in, definitely put in your request by logging into the housing portal and submitting that no later than August 27th. We have a variety of early move-in dates to choose from, and so you would be billed for those extra days. We would bill to your student account and you would just pay, like you would pay tuition and housing throughout the term. So payment isn't due before arrival or anything, you can pay it after. Otherwise, our standard move-in is September 23rd and 24th. Freshmen are primarily on the 23rd and transfer upperclassmen and graduate students are on the 24th. Uh, this week, we are sending out room and roommate notices, so you can expect that email here pretty soon. I also wanted to include that we do require the COVID vaccine for all of our students who will be on campus. So if you haven't yet, be sure to fill out the verification form. It's due by September 1st, and it's uh, operated by our student health and counseling services. You also have to upload your medical records. And then if you're coming from a country who, where you might not have easy access to the COVID vaccine, we would encourage you to arrive early so that you could get that vaccine upon arrival. Thank you, Diane. And now Grace, our mentor leader, will share housing options off campus. Hi, um, for the off-campus housing, 
we, we wanted to, when we are looking for off-campus housing, you will need to do some apartment search. And the research part, you want to consider about the distance or the community time and transportation, because if you only think about the rent and the rent may be cheaper when it's away from school, but you will need to spend time to commute to school. And also the, the price part, you will also need to check if the utility is including or is the extra fee will be, will be paid after you sign the contract. And sometimes you want to see um, if there is a gym, the amenities including in your apartment and the deposit contract lens or application, sometimes they will do the background check before you sign, uh, before they approve your contracts. And here we put a uh, example apartment that is uh, college house in Northwest. It's close to PSU and they have different buildings that um, is available close to, by PSU. And like Clay, Tiffany and the Amy, they are really like few blocks away. And if you choose to leave Goose Hollow, they have uh, free shuttle bus service and it's just 10 to 15 minutes walking from PSU. And next slide, please. So some things you need to keep in mind when you are looking for a roommate. Um, potential roommates maybe um, have family member come with them or the study time that may be different from you or the bedtime may be different from you. And the reason I put the food choice and eating time here is maybe your potential roommate is allergic to something and you want to know before you move in with them or um, just uh, let them know what kind of stuff you like to eat. And if they are allergic to something, just avoid to use that. And if the roommate has pet and maybe you are allergic to a pet, the pet or something that's um, kept in mind before you uh, move in to live with a roommate. And next slide, please. And here is something you also want to be aware for of campus housing. And when you are looking for the apartment, you need to check if that is available for international students to lease the unit. Sometimes they will ask you to have some people to sign a guarantee on your leasing. And so you want to know, is there any particular requirement that international students might not be able to meet? And what distance from the school? Um, maybe you want to get close to grocery store or um, you want to get close to a park and that's what um, neighborhood you like. So um, how many bedroom does um, you want to live with a roommate or you want to live alone? And is the student bring the family member with them? So that's, uh, or um, we just list out the example that you want to keep in mind when you are looking for off-campus housing. And if the apartment, including the furniture, so you just bring your suitcase and then move in, or you will need to find your uh, furniture after you come in. And if the student, um, uh, sometimes people did not know we need to pay security deposit. And when you sign the leasing, maybe the security deposit will be returned later or it's just paid to them and not returned after you move in. After you sign the leasing and ready to move out, will that uh, security deposit be returned after that? And what is the last payment day? Is the payment, if you pay it late, will that be a late payment fee or not? Um, this is something you need to check with your apartment. And of course, we may have some question about the contracts or leasing. And this is something we, you can ask the student legal service after you get to PSU. You can make appointment with them and then they can resolve that with you. And I think uh, we will talk about that um, in a minute. And then if the student has a pet, is the apartment have the pet policy or you need to pay for the pet to stay in the apartment? And if you don't understand the contrast, then there is something you need to uh, pay attention. And that's something you can talk with the student legal service after you move to Portland. Okay, that's it. 
Thank you, Grace. Next, I will um, like to hand the mic back to Alyssa, who will um, talk about contracts and leases. Okay, so for um, off-campus housing, um, I would say it's standard that um, you would need to sign a housing contract or lease. Um, and the length can depend on the housing type and it's up to that individual who owns the property. And then typically, I would say a year lease is the most common in the US, um, but there are places that do month to month, um, six months, or even up to two year leases. And I would say that housing leases are very strict and law binding. So make sure that you look over the lease agreements um, and the rules before you sign anything. And once, um, once the term starts and you begin your studies, you can, like Grace mentioned before, you can access um, a resource on campus called the Student Legal Services. So if you have any questions or need help understanding um, the specific lease agreements in your contract, they are available to go over that with you and help explain it because sometimes the housing contract can be very long and it's a lot of information. And so um, if you have any questions about that, you can of course start with our office to see if we can help, but then we might direct you to the student legal services um, since they have a lot more knowledge about how that works. Um, and I will say um, that like with any places, there is the potential for scamming. So if you're looking on a site where a lot of different people are looking for roommates and um, posting um, their housing information, there um, can potentially sometimes be scammers trying to um, trick you and, and get um, money. So I would recommend just being super cautious if you use like the third party sites like Craigslist or um, other places where anyone can post um, housing information versus like if you go directly to the apartment complex to learn more about it. And so um, if you have any questions or even if you're like, I'm not sure if this is real or not, you can always email your mentor to maybe have another set of eyes on it, or you can email our office just to see, um, because we don't want you to get tricked or scammed out of a lot of money. Uh, most of the time, I don't think people will like email you and say like, we need you to give us $3,000 for you to move in. Um, usually there, there's a process um, like applying for it, um, looking over the apartment, making sure it's for you, um, and then signing and putting a down payment. So um, just be aware of that. It, it doesn't happen often, but I would hate for that to happen to you. Um, so just as an FYI, not to scare you or anything. Okay, and Yoga, if you wanna pass it to the next person. Thank you, Alyssa. And then now, the Diane is going to talk about how to live happily with roommates if you are going to live with roommates. So most likely, if you're living on campus and you have a roommate, you don't know them before you move in. And so, like I mentioned earlier, we are emailing students this week for anyone who has a confirmed room assignment. We'll send you your room details and your roommate information so you can contact them via email, start that conversation before moving in. We recommend getting to know them just as a person, but also using that time to know who's bringing what. So maybe one of you can bring the microwave. Maybe one of you wants to bring a Keurig because you like drinking coffee in the morning. So discussing those options and making sure that you don't have duplicate items. We really encourage that. 
Also, living with a roommate, communication is definitely key. Keep an open line of communication with your roommate and make sure you're sharing your needs as well as listening to the needs of your roommate. So figuring out what areas you can compromise, letting them know what's most important to you, whether that's cleaning habits, sleeping habits, um, how you spend your time studying, how you feel about guests coming over, things like that. We also recommend setting expectations early on. So once you're settled in and moved in, kind of that first week of classes, it's a good time to set the groundwork for what your expectations are and to listen to what their expectations are. So getting in the habit of like good, maybe cleaning routines or just good routines in general, uh, during that first week, you can get an understanding of what time you usually like to wake up in the morning, what time you go to bed, likewise for your roommate. And then lastly, we encourage students to be open minded. Students, of course, are not going to be exactly the same. There is going to be some different things that they have as far as like opinions or, you know, just living styles in general, but we encourage students to be flexible and again, communicate when things are bugging you. Don't wait until you're, you're at the end of your rope and you burst out in anger because of something that's been going on for a long time and your roommate had no idea. So definitely communicate and be open-minded, be flexible as well. Thank you, Diane. Yes, setting expectations first at the beginning is very, very important. All right. So Alyssa, what other important information to keep in mind? OK, so what else should you keep in mind? Um, so a security deposit. Um, <clears throat> a security deposit is a prepayment to the landlord of where you're going to live to ensure that rent will be paid and other responsibilities um, such as uh, paying for any damage caused to the apartment or having to remove items after a move out. And most housing, off-campus housing options will require some sort of security deposit. Um, and this is a, a separate amount for, from the normal rent. Um, and it's usually given back at the end of the lease as long as um, all the terms have been fulfilled and the space um, is left in good condition. So just to be aware that you uh, will probably have to pay like a month's rent and, and on top of that, put it, a security deposit down. Um, I mentioned scams earlier. Um, Renters insurance, uh, renters insurance often called um, tenants insurance is um, an insurance that, an insurance policy that helps protect you and your belongings. Um, so it usually covers liability protection, um, protection um, of your belongings and additional living expenses in the case of um, temporary relocation. Um, usually renter's insurance is very affordable. It's about $20 a month um, and is just really good to have if you're living in an off-campus place. Um, community guidelines. So some shared spaces such as apartments or, or even dorms um, will have a set of community guidelines that can be official or unofficial rules about behavior in the shared space um, and within your own room or rooms um, and can include policies around like scents and perfumes, um, quiet hours, and then ways of interacting with other tenants, um, just a variety, depending on where you live, it, it'll be different. And then pets, um, various housing types will have different rules around pets. So if you have or you plan to get a pet while you're here, please um, double check that it's okay with your landlord in the place where you live. 
Um, most places nowadays require an additional cost um, in the form of a pet deposit, kind of like a security deposit, um, or an additional rent, um, additional um, uh, money on top of what you pay per month. Um, it's, I think, more and more it's becoming um, like more places will allow pets, but sometimes it can be a little bit trickier to navigate if places don't allow it. And so um, just please make sure when you're looking for a place and you have a pet that it's okay before you sign any, um, before you sign your contract or lease. Thank you, Alyssa. And another important thing to be um, mindful of is that just make sure to uh, keep all the communication with landlord, um, like whether it is an email and like any type of written documents, because if something happens, you'll be able to, um, you know, uh, address that using that communication. Okay, thank you, Alyssa. And lastly, Grace will touch base on what student life is like at PSU. So when you uh, move to Portland and start to live on campus or um, off campus, you can always use the student uh, direct center. It's available for everyone. And we can, we, um, you can join their class to, to do the exercise together. And here I write, I have the link for you. So you will be able to find out their schedule if you want to join the class um, from the rec center. And this uh, student organization will be, uh, um, you will be able to see what's including and it's called Party in the Park. And this year is in September 30th. And that day you will see lots, uh, that's boots around park and then you can talk to them and then sign sign your list, uh, write down your email and then they can send you some information about when are they going to meet or if you are interested in the student organization. And that's a good place to start um, making new friends or just to see what's available on campus. And if you need to apply for student uh, scholarship and you can reach to the International Student Scholarship website and there are available one for you to um, apply. And next slide, please. So here we list out some um, important parts you need to keep in mind. Like what, if you are undergraduate student, you can um, click to the college student, college success course, and that's uh, located in Andin, and that will help you to do some tutoring or some um, college success on campus. And PSU is a quarter system, it's not a semester system, so each term is like three months. And we do have learning center available in the library, and you can go to learning center and ask them to help you to um, work on your homework together. And for us, each term when we have a class start, the professor will hand us the syllabus and it will uh, list out the midterm or the final or when do you need to turn in your homework. So time management is very important for us. And you will need to make the plan like maybe it's good to study with a friend and form a group study. So the group work will help you and help each other out to do the homework. And for graduate students also um, need to keep in mind, maybe you change your subject from um, different major for undergraduate and now you change to different major for the graduate study. So some background knowledge may be required to take some course from undergraduate and also um, time management and midterm and final maybe um, will be project. And you will need to find out when you need to submit something in. So just keep in mind the time management is very important. Okay, next slide, please. And the day-to-day -day base um, at PSU, 
remember to check your PSC email and once the course start, uh, log into D12 to see if there's any assignment due and attend your uh, class. If it's remote, then attend the room meeting. And if it's in person, just um, check out the map before the class starts to find out which building you need to go for your in-person lecture course and study for sure. <laughs> And if you want to find on-campus uh, job, um, PSU use a uh, handshake database and here is the link for you. And if you want to um, do some class with the rec center um, courses, you can join the group X class and here also have the link for you. And that's it, thank you. Thank you very much, Grace. Uh, we plan to have some small in-person events during the week of orientation. Um, so you will receive an email in September. Please stay tuned. And if you have any questions about um, what's like to, to live in Portland, what's like to be a student at PSU, please contact your international student mentors. Now we are moving into Q&A session. I know that we are scheduled to end at 9.50, but let's um, have maybe five minutes to, to answer your questions um, and ask us questions. And if you have you know, personalized questions, please make sure to email oia at pdx.edu if you have a question about visa and immigration status, and so life uh, for student life, pre-arrival, orientation, and any other info, uh, any other questions that you may have. If you are moving into on-campus housing and has questions, please contact housing at pdx.edu. So please start typing your questions into chat and I will address that and ask the panelists to answer those questions. Any questions we'll take. Maybe specific the housing and student life um, for this one. Can we please have the job search link again? Sure thing, let's go back. So if you could see the portlandstate.joinhandshake.com. So just go to this uh, website and you will need uh, your Odin account to log in. Um, and then you will create uh, your profile and you'll be able to search on campus job um, at PSU. And that has information about, you know, how many hours you're expected to work in a week and what the, the requirements are. And you'll be able to um, upload your resume and apply to that specific job as well. Okay. And Raina, I hope you uh, got the, the link okay. Thank you, Diane. Okay, and is there any system or list for somebody looking for roommates? And Alyssa, thank you. So we do have a, a, a website, um, Alyssa just posted, room, roomsurf.com, Portland State University roommates. You can go to this one to look for a roommates. Thank you, Alyssa. And you mentioned something about medical records. Can you please tell when do we need to hand them out? And when is the due date for that? Um, so Diana, would you be able to answer that question? Yeah, so the due date for that is September 1st. The sooner the better if you can. You should have received an email either from housing or I believe it was like vaccines at pdx.edu. One of those will have the instructions for the vaccine, vaccine verification process, what you need to do to verify having had the vaccine and then how to upload your medical records. Thank you, Diane. Um, and if you have any questions about vaccines, um, you can email, just like Diane mentioned, vaccines at pdx.edu. 
Okay, and they will be able to give you um, the vaccine clinics that we will have at SHAC for newly arrived international students or just students in general. All right, so next one is my visa has been in administrative processing since 5th of August, and I don't know when I will have an answer. How can I deal with that? That is a very good question. I will definitely ask you to contact OIA at pdx.edu and one of the, the program coordinators or international student advisor will be able to assist you um, so that, you know, they can talk to you about the timeline. You know, by this time, if you don't get visa, you may need to defer. Um, your admission to a future term, or you might be able to just start taking some classes um, from home, um, and then your immigration status will be um, activated once you come to the United States. So those are things like really important and very personalized, right, to specific to your case. So make sure to connect with our office so that you can get, um, you know, the appropriate advice from our office. Thank you for asking that. All right. Is there any way to connect to graduate students from India? And I know that, um, yeah, so Alyssa and other students um, that you can connect with the Indian Student Association at PSU. They are very, very active. Um, so make sure to connect with them so that you'll be able to meet um, or connect with other Indian students. Thank you. Are safety boxes standard equipment uh, off campus houses? Safety boxes standard equipment. Will you elaborate that? Um, or, panelists, do you know what safety boxes standard equipment are? I only prepare the first ads for myself, but I don't know um, what safety box that. Um, I don't really have idea about that part. Yeah, so maybe Hiroyuki, if you could uh, elaborate that one, that would be helpful. Or you can email us at intolife. I'm going to just put that information. Or um, if you would like to connect with me, um, you can email uh, me as well. Uh, and I can speak Japanese too, if you prefer Japanese, just FYI. All right. Okay. What else? Okay, great. Thank you, Hiroyuki. What other information would you like to know before we close our conversation for today? Ooh, is there a Latin Student Association? That is a good question. Panelists, do you know? I know there are so many student groups on campus um, that are active. And then, you know, not only the, the cultural groups, but there are like academic groups that are available um, as well. And where you can find um, what groups are available is that, let me, let me find out, hold on a second. Oh yes, thank you so much. Yes, Alyssa just put the, the student organizations. So it's under student leadership and activities, um, SALP. And then you'll be able to find, you know, whether you are looking for, um, you know, the Latin student group or religious um, a group. I know that there are, you know, many other uh, groups available for you to join as well. And they will be very active once fall term starts as well. Yeah, great questions. Uh, which Portland suburbs can one consider for lower rents compared to downtown? That is a good question. Definitely uh, downtown Portland is the, I think most, one of the most expensive place to live because it's just close to everything. 
Um, and then the further you go from downtown, like uh, Grace mentioned before, uh, the rents will be a little bit more affordable. But again, commuting uh, will take time for you. And at the same time, you want to make sure that, you know, the place that you will live, um, you feel safe and comfortable living there as well. Um, panelists, do you have any, um, any other things to, to add to Nikhil's question about suburbs? Sure. Yeah, I would say, um, so within Portland, there are, are neighborhoods. So um, like there's Northwest Portland, Northeast Portland, Southeast, Southwest, and, and then outside of Portland are what we call, yeah, the suburbs. So like Beaverton, Hillsboro, um, Gresham, Lake Oswego, um, and you'll go right the further out you go, it's possible that the rent is cheaper. Um, I would recommend um, making sure there's like a good uh, bus line or if it's close to the train for easy access to um, transportation, um, seeing if there's like uh, free parking or if it costs money if you have a car. And then just keeping in mind that for downtown, um, most, almost all bus lines and train lines go through um, downtown and to PSU. So just checking kind of the route you would need to take, like, can you take one bus? Um, would you need to take two buses? And um, there, there's a commuter pass that PSU offers at a slightly discounted rate. And so kind of factoring that in of like, maybe rent is $700, but then I'd have to pay an additional amount for the pass. So it ends up being this much. Um, or maybe you can bike to PSU from your place, which would make it uh, more affordable. Um, and just kind of keeping in mind those factors when deciding like how far away you wanna live and the time it might take to get to and from school. Or if you'd rather like sacrifice a little bit more financially so that you can be pretty much like on campus when, whenever you want to be. So yeah, just kind of, it's totally up to you and your preference and just keeping in mind those, those types of things when you're looking at, at places. Thank you, Alyssa. Um, one more thing to add is that if you look, um, if you find an apartment that you would like to live, make sure to um, search for reviews for that apartment too. And then, you know, the, the, the past resident, you know, might be able to share something about um, that specific apartment. Um, if it is, you know, maybe like too loud at night that, you know, that you won't be able to focus on studies. That's something that, um, you know, you really want to know. Okay. Um, so because we are at 10 o'clock uh, now, so we are going to close our um, a conversation for today. Um, so thank you very much. And then I, I see the uh, another question. So I'll make sure to address that um, in my email to you after the presentation um, so that you will receive a recording and a, um, a question to your answer, okay? Um, so we will send you a feedback form with that. Please submit it so that we can improve our webinar next time. And if you have a, uh, any questions or concerns, please contact us um, or you, your international student mentor. Please join our next webinar about advisor Q&A and a mentor connect. You'll be able to uh, ask any questions that you have about um, at PSU or Portland or immigration uh, during this session. And you will have a, a time to connect with your international student mentor and other international students coming to PSU in fall. And this will be um, scheduled on Wednesday, September 1st. And if you have not registered for this specific one, please do so, so that you'll be able to join uh, the session, okay? So thank you very much again for participating in our webinar today. We are looking forward to having you at the next webinar. Take care. <laughs>